got some past exam questions here for year 13 organic synthesis it's the first set of two so if you wanted to have a go at these questions the link to them is in the description of the video so just click on that download the questions and then play the video for the answers okay so the first question is a multiple choice question we're told that cyanide ions react with haloalkanes and with carbonyl compounds which role gives the correct mechanism the key to this is the cyanide ions are nucleophile so the reaction's got to have nucleophilic in so you can see i've ticked those and the only uh, role with both ticked is d so it's nucleophilic substitution when uh, cn minus ions react with haloalkanes and it's nucleophilic addition when cyanide ions react with carbonyl compounds okay so question two we've got to produce um, compound D or compound D is an intermediate in the synthesis of some drugs it's synthesized from ethanol so the thing I've written up there first of all is ethanol the starting materials only got two carbons whereas compound D's got three so we need to grow the carbon chain by one so we need to involve CN minus ions so we've got to give a two-step synthesis of compound D from ethanol and the usual thing, uh, appropriate reagents and conditions and equation for each step, showing clearly all the organic compounds. So the way I've done it is, step one, I'm getting that carbon chain grown, so I'm reacting ethanol with HCN, or you could actually say the chemicals it's made from, so they don't actually use HCN directly, it's too toxic, so they use a mixture of sodium cyanide and sulfuric acid. Anyway, the mark scheme allowed either those or that, and there's the reaction. So step two now, we've got to convert this nitrile group into an amine group. So that's done by reacting with hydrogen and a nickel catalyst. So there's the equation there. We need two moles of hydrogen, and you can see the CN functional group changes to CH2, NH2. So you can see it's four more hydrogens gone in. So we need two H2s. Moving on to the next part. So compound D reacts with propane dioxide acid to form a condensation polymer. Draw a possible repeat unit and show clearly the functional group present. So there's compound D. All I've done here is on that carbon there, I've put the CH3 pointing up and the OH group pointing out. That way it makes the lasso a lot easier to visualize. Uh, there's the NH2 group and there's that propane dioxide acid. So to form a condensation polymer, we need to um, generate a water molecule in this case. So we take the OH group from the carboxyl group from the propane dioxide acid. That's going to happen at both ends. An H from the NH2 group, and obviously the other H is from this hydroxyl group here. So that would generate this repeat unit, the way this one's configured, or you could turn this around so you'd have the that OH group here NH2 group on that side which would mean it would look like that so moving on to question three we've got this uh, flow chart involving reactions of compound L so I'm going to focus on I'm actually going to focus on this first because we're given the sort of final product of this part of the flow chart and the important thing to note here is that OH group is on uh, carbon number one, two, three, okay? So when we react it with HBr, remember HBr can add either way across that double bond, we want the bromine to go here because then when it reacts with sodium hydroxide, it'll substitute for the OH group, okay? So that was, that was important uh, to spot to get it the right way around. So I've just written there, Br needs to go on carbon three and not carbon two, C final product okay so it's adding br there h goes on there and that'll generate that product there so we may as well go down here if you react that with sodium hydroxide we're going to get a substitution of the um, br for the oh but we'll also get sodium hydroxide will create a salt at this end so we'll get the c o minus na plus uh, salt at that end there and then if we go up from here it's reacting with excess ammonia and ethanol so as well as um, a substitution of this Br for an NH2 group we're also going to get a reaction between the ammonia remember it's a proton acceptor this 
So we can accept that H plus there, turn it into an ammonium ion, and basically form a salt, a bit like we had there, okay? So we get this here. Part B, outline the mechanism that occurs in reaction one. So that was a reaction of the carbon-carbon double bond with uh, the HBr molecule. And remember, we wanted the bromine to go here. So all of this for that first mark, so that's a dipole across the HBr bond that way. A pair of electrons coming out from the pi bond, so curly arrow from the pi bond, and then this bond breaks by uh, heterolytic fission. So all of that for the first mark. And then that will generate this carbocation intermediate. So the positive charge basically needs to be there. So that was with a second mark. And then obviously that bromine will be this bromide ion and that attaches itself via the lone pair there and forms a, a, a covalent bond, which will be that one there. And the name of that mechanism is electrophilic addition. Question four, got another flow chart here. So we've got to eventually generate this ester. So which reagent will convert the aldehyde group into a carboxylic acid group? Obviously it's an oxidizing agent. So it's a mixture of acidified with sulfuric acid, acidified potassium dichromate. So you'd need K2Cr207 and H2SO4. To generate the ester, we, we need this to be converted to an alcohol so that we can react the carboxylic acid group with the alcohol group to generate the ester. So that's done by reducing the aldehyde group with uh, NABH4. So aldehydes are reduced to primary alcohols. So that's the compound C formula. And then what we're doing is I've drawn the carboxylic acid bit. This is that, okay? And I'll just get the highlighter on. So basically I'm taking the OH and an H to generate a water molecule and an ester bond will form between um, this and this part here. So we've got that C double bond O and then the single bond O is there, CH2 and then that. So moving on to the next part, give the mechanism for the formation of compound C in reaction one curly arrows and relevant dipoles. So the aldehyde needs a dipole across the C double bond door. Um, the reducing agent provides hydride ions, H minus ions. So we take a curly arrow from the lone pair on the H minus ion to the carbon, slightly positive carbon. That'll repel the pi electron pair in that pi bond completely onto the oxygen. So it breaks that bond by heterolytic fission. That'll generate the intermediate, so there's that new H there. The, that'll be a single bond now with a negative charge on the O. And I'm showing that the lone pair bring a water molecule into play and we just need to form a bond with that slightly positive hydrogen on the water to create the OH group. Moving on to the final part of this question, part D. One mole of compound B reacts with two moles of bromine by electrophilic substitution. Um, I've written there, each substitution generates a hydrogen halide. So every time you take a hydrogen off the ring and put one of those bromines on, you make a hydrogen halide. So because there's two moles involved in the reaction, we're gonna get two substitutions, two hydrogen halides. So that's how the equation works. Um, the mark scheme allows substitution anywhere on the benzene ring. I've put them there and there, but you could have just put them there and there if you'd wanted. And the final question is a multiple choice question. Benzaldehyde reacts with a mixture of NaCN and H plus aqueous, which is the organic product. You'll notice I've knocked up the um, mechanism there just to show why the answer is B.